Hey you, what up? Spring is here, and you know what else is here? Ariana Grande's R.E.M. Beauty Chapter 2 collection is here, baby. Yeah, here it is, and it is looking vibrant. Here are all the new products, and in today's video, this is what I'm gonna be talking about. I'm going to be trying them all on, slapping them to my face, showing you swatches of everything, spraying myself with all of these, and basically giving you the scoop. Do you need these in your life? Am I impressed at my first impression? Impression. Are these cool? Are they worth the hype? Are they boring? I also want to hear from you So sound off below and let me know your thoughts about this video this line Ariana Grande her products anything in general Remember to subscribe if you aren't already you know the drill and now let's get into this video REM beauty chapter 2 good night and go collection here we come all right, so first and foremost, we've got the PR package. Very cute in my opinion. And I must mention that the top of this PR package is wall art. It's actually a tile that you can place on the wall. It came with a wall mount. So I am definitely not throwing this away. I'm saving this for my sister because she's a big Ariana Grande fan, as am I. But I think she'll appreciate it much more than me. Inside the PR package, we have this gorgeous photo of Ari with the makeup look from this collection. So. Chapter two, volume two, good night and go is the theme. And this is inspired by vivid dreams, limitless possibilities, experience a world of beauty and creativity. I gotta say, this is up my alley. I really love this teal, this very space age sort of vibe. I feel like it speaks to me. And even though REM Beauty or REM Beauty is kind of meant to be like a Gen Z friendly line, I feel like it speaks to me as a millennial because Ariana Grande is a millennial, just like me. Let's go over all the products. I should mention though, I did just film this entire footage of about 30 minutes or so, only to realize that there was no audio in the footage. So although this is still a first impression, I'm not going to fake a first impression. I will let you know straight up. I did already swatch everything. I still have some glitter on my hand. I will salvage some of that footage and I will use it, but just know that this will not be like my oohs and my ahs and all of my natural first impressions that you typically would expect. Instead, I'm just gonna give you a description because I'm still a little bit ticked off at what just happened. But anyway, moving right along, let's talk about all the products. First and foremost, I do wanna mention that this collection has some skincare adjacent products, namely a face mist, also a blurring under eye balm, also a lash and brow serum. So that's something new and different for REM Beauty. The face mist is supposed to be a calming face mist to soothe and calm stressed out skin. It contains some lavender essential oil, also chamomile water. And it's just supposed to make your skin feel soft and hydrated while protecting you against free radicals. And also it's just supposed to be a sensorial experience. So I did already try this on, like I said, so it's not gonna be a first impression, but I will say that this mist is not fine AF. This is in fact very bursty, let's call it that. All right, let's spray again. This face mist, although smells very nice and very calming, it's definitely not as fine as say like the Pixie Milky Mist Spray. This definitely kind of just like splurts the mist instead of misting it. So not super fine, but it does feel nice on the skin. This is a $24 product, I believe. And now the Full Night Sleep Cooling Blurring Under Eye Balm is a $22 product, which in my original first impression, I did say it looks like the Becca Zero Foundations. You guys remember that one, that super gimmicky one? It even feels the same when you pick it up with your finger, kind of like, like a mashed potato, literally. But it does feel very, very nice, soothing and cooling under your eye. It does give a very light blurring feeling and it absolutely helps to awaken your eye. So now this contains some go-to cola, which is Centella Asiatica, and this helps to soothe and blur imperfections. Also contains caffeine, which obviously helps with puffiness and dark circles. Also it has mushroom extract, which is an antioxidant, and also helps to prevent against free radicals. So all of those things are very nice. And this, I will say, feels very nice. So at first impression, and even at second impression, I like it. Now the most expensive thing in this collection is actually the Lash and Brow Serum. This is supposed to be a boosting serum that is biotin formulated. It's supposed to give you those can be real lashes in three months. That's what they say in quotes. Also has an infusion of tetrapeptide, which is a peptide from red clover flower extract. Helps fortify follicles in the brow and lash lines. And also 
It has biotin and it helps prevent damage and breakage. So that's all nice. This is $40 product. Like I said, I'm not gonna try it out today because I will be testing out some of these eyeshadows. So this I will try out at night and maybe come back to you. Now moving on to the next product, which is kind of like a hybrid, I would say. We've got an eyeshadow gloss. Looks very scientific. This is $16. Comes in a very sturdy but squeezy tube. Looks like a gloss. And when you squeeze it out, it looks like clear gloss, but feels more oily than sticky. So that I may or may not try out. All right, moving on to the actual color product in the collection. We've got some cheek and lip sticks. There's 10 new shades, but I have three here in the collection. These are $18 each, and this is how much you get. A pretty decent amount, I will say. Still going. This shade is called Leading Lady, love the name. And this is 7.5 grams or 0.26 ounces. Not bad. All right, I am going to swatch these on my cheek, even though I already did it. But anyway, this is pretty pigmented, I will say. Pretty, pretty pigmented, and it feels not as balmy as it looks. It's kind of like a mix between balmy and matte. All right, next shade is Audition. And this is just like a beautiful nudie shade. And the final shade we have here is Broadway Baby. And this one's definitely more of like a rosy tint. Again, these can be used on the lips and I will do that once I actually start the application process. This is what it blends out like. Pretty decent, kind of reminds me a little bit of the Jaclyn Cosmetics stick blushes, which are some of my faves. Look at that, pretty good. All right, I'm gonna remove that. And now moving on to the Midnight Shadows Metallic Gel Eyeshadows. These are $16 each, and although I've already swatched them and I will pop up the swatches of what these look like, I gotta say, this is a product that I am personally the most impressed by. So I have it here in three shades, and there's actually five shades all together. And these feel just a little bit different to me. These look very reflective, and they feel very gel-like on the skin. So it's not the type of formulation like a liquid eyeshadow in a tube that dries down pretty hard and sometimes even crusty. This is nothing of the sort. This is very thin, but very reflective. And this was the second product in the collection that actually like made me stop in my tracks and made me say, ooh, this is different. This feels cool. This is something that I hadn't really seen before. I gotta give it to them there. And finally, we've got the eyeshadow palette. I've got three of them in my possession. Now these are supposed to be mattes and metallics. Here we've got Groovy Baby. These did swatch pretty nice, although I would say the mattes weren't as emollient as the shimmery shades, but swatches can't really tell you much about how it will apply. It just tells us a little bit about the color and how it shows up on the skin, but not so much about how it applies when you blend it out using makeup artist techniques. So this is what it looks like. These are, I believe, $24 each. Here we've got Smitten Kitten. This one's a little bit rosier, still pretty neutral, good for every day, but it's got some pinkish, some ruby tones, also some neutral browns in both matte and shimmery finishes. And the final one, which is my favorite color combo, is called Go Go Boots. I love the fact that it has a really bright, vibrant teal, just in time for spring. Also a shimmery lavender, and all the other shades are shimmery as well. We've got like a rusty, bronzy brown shade. We've got a maroon brown, and some taupey, shimmery shades. So I think these are all pretty wearable. And I am someone who actually really likes this packaging. Even though it looks like it's light, and like it's made out of plastic it's actually heavier than you may think and it feels a little bit more luxurious than one would imagine I feel like the packaging doesn't really translate on camera or in photos and it looks and feels a lot better in person even that snap that's a nice snap. All right, so now that we have talked about everything, now that we have shown all the swatches of everything, let's actually apply all of these products to the face. Let's create a look and let's see where it takes us. So right now on my face, I have my skincare, I have the mist thing, and I have the cooling blurring under eye balm on my under eye. I don't have any foundation on just yet, but I do wanna see how this blush applies to my bare skin. So I'm gonna go for the nudie shade Audition. Just gonna add that generously to my cheek area and I'm gonna blend it out with a brush. I feel like that was really good. It doesn't feel sticky. It blends out really easily. It's not patchy. And there's definitely enough color for you to say that I'm wearing blush. So that I really like. I will also add some over my foundation, but for now, I quickly just wanna put on my face. So I'm gonna use these NARS Light Reflecting Foundations, Stromboli and Vanuatu, mixed. I'm gonna quickly do the face. This is a medium coverage foundation, so I'm trying to see if the blush will pop through the foundation or if I'll need to also add some on top. 
All right, foundation is on. Excuse the shade. I don't think I actually have a proper shade in this foundation because they have changed the colors of their foundations in this formulation. But anyway, we're not here for that. Under eye concealer. Curious to see how the under eye concealer will actually apply over the blurring skin balm. I'm gonna go in kind of heavily just because I'm feeling very orange. And this concealer is much, much cooler and much lighter. I'm gonna blend and blur. Honestly, not bad. I didn't notice that the blurring bomb was interfering with the concealer in any bit. In fact, I think it made the concealer blend a little bit easier. That's a first impression that I did just notice for the first time. All right, let me go ahead and set one size. All right, so if you notice, I only put the powder on like the center of my face, but not so much on the center of my cheeks, because I definitely do want to apply a little bit more of that blush just to see how it applies over foundation. I still can see the blush from underneath the foundation, so I'm adding just a couple of dots, and I gotta give it to them. Still blends out really, really effortlessly. It's not disrupting my foundation, and in fact, it's working with it. So I am pleased. I think you guys will like this one, no matter your skin type. I think this is a pretty decent, pretty versatile product. Also gonna try to add it to the lips. So again, I'm going for the shade Audition. Huh, this definitely applies like a lipstick, and it's got some pigment, and it's got a matte finish. So I really like the blush. I feel like it's a really nice, versatile product, especially the fact that you could wear it on your lips, and it looks so pretty i'm sold here for it okay let's move on to the eye products so for the eye products i definitely want to dip into this metallic eye gel i think ari is actually wearing it right here in the promo so i definitely want to do something like that but i also want to dip into some of these palettes so i am thinking i'm just gonna dip around i'm just gonna do what i do so first as always my fenty beauty primer i don't go anywhere without it Next, I am actually gonna dip into this very vibrant teal, and I wanna see how vibrantly it applies. This was a shadow that swatched pretty chalky, but it picks up pretty well with this MAC 239S brush. So let's see how it adheres to my Fenty Beauty Primer. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that onto my inner lid. Look at that, look at that. It is pretty packed with pigment, and I wouldn't call this a pastel-y shade. This is actually a pretty punchy teal. It's got some body. It's got some weight to it. I'm just adding that to the inner portion, kind of like rounding out this area like that. And then for the outer portion, I am going to go for that lavender. Why? Because these shades are here and I'm here to test them out. So I'm going to go for the matte lavender from the Groovy Baby palette. And now the teal was from the Go Go Boots. Now this one I'm gonna add in a diagonal, kind of lifting towards the brow. This one isn't as pigmented as the teal, but it still adheres and it still gives enough color that I can see it in the monitor. So I don't know. I did like the eyeshadow palette that I tried in the first launch and it was actually one of my most used eyeshadow palettes just because it was so neutral and so everyday. I did bring it with me on like day trips or weekend trips to DC or to upstate. So it was a really good handy palette and very travel friendly. In my opinion, I think the formulation of these eyeshadows is pretty decent. I mean, it's not amazing, like say Natasha Denona or Pat McGrath, but I would say it's up there with like Urban Decay. And when I say Urban Decay, I'm talking about their best palettes. Like I am definitely not mad at this outcome. This is good. This is good. All right, for the center of the lid, you guessed it. I am gonna go for this metallic gel. Not really sure how to apply it. And when you first open it, it does look a little bit creepy. And it also makes one of those sounds, you know, but I'm thinking maybe with the finger it's best. So I'm just gonna pick up a little bit with my finger, like that much. I'm gonna stamp that onto the center. And then with another finger, I am going to blend it out. This is great. This is really, really lovely. It feels very cool, a little bit wet on the lid, very, very sparkly. It doesn't get crusty. A little bit goes a long way. I like these a lot. I'm gonna reach for just a little bit more to see if I can work up the opacity and make it a little bit more colorful as opposed to sparkly. And I think I can. So this is something that is very, very intuitive, very easy to use. Anyone can make good use of it, whether you're a makeup artist or a teenager who's just learning makeup. But this is definitely fun and it's vibrant and 
it adds something special to the collection. It's not something that I have seen before, not in this exact jelly formulation. I definitely like the result. I think it's so nice. So now I'm gonna pick up that gloss because it is an eyeshadow gloss after all. I'm gonna squeeze a little bit, gently hug and kiss my brow bone. I don't know if I would necessarily wear this over eyeshadow or on the lid. You could probably mix it in with the sparkles, but that's not the effect that I'm going for here. I just want like a very bare but glossy brow bone. So that is what I just went for and that is what I was able to achieve. Very nice. Perhaps I could even use it in the inner corner, but maybe that's a little too close to my foundation. I don't know, but that as is looks very nice. I'm gonna dip into this shimmery gunmetal shade from Groovy Baby. I'm gonna give myself a wing just to see if I can use this eyeshadow as a liner. And in fact, I can. I just wanted a soft, slightly darkened corner here, and I think that did it. Ooh, I did notice a little bit of crustiness now on the gel eyeshadow, which I did not notice before with the first layer, but with the second layer, once I doubled up on the opacity, I did notice there was just like a little bit of crustiness happening. So I'm noting that, but that's still not deterring me from using this product the way that I did. I'm probably just not gonna double up on it. And the crustiness did cause just a little bit of fallout. Which I'm not super pleased with, but it's kind of to be expected. I did that to myself. Moving on to completing this look. I do feel like with this one, I could probably use a set of lashes. I guess maybe a little bit of liner, just a thin little liner. Nothing too dramatic and nothing that will take away from the look. So now I noticed on my Girl Trend Moods page that there were some new lashes added to this chapter two collection, but I didn't see any lashes in this PR package. So I'm just gonna use any lashes that I have here laying around just to kind of dress up this look because I feel like it needs it. I'm gonna go for Becky G Tres Luce lashes in the style Deseo. Curl them real quick. All right, these lashes are very light and dainty. They definitely add something they don't take away. Also gonna need just a little bit of mascara. So I'm gonna use this Cali Ray. All right, cute. And I think for the sake of this look, I'm actually gonna leave my lower lash line alone as is. I'm gonna leave it bare, no mascara, no eyeshadow. I'm just gonna let the top lid do all the talking. So now that I have tried on pretty much everything from this collection, outside of some of the other skincare items that I will need to try out separately, I think I have formulated an opinion. This is officially my favorite launch from REM Beauty. And I gotta say, there are quite a few things in here that I really like. So now, First, let's talk about the eyeshadow palettes. For $24, I feel like these are pretty decent eyeshadow palettes. Yes, these are colors that we have seen before, but the quality of these eyeshadows are pretty decent. I like the way that they swatched, especially the metallic shades. I think the color stories are very wearable. Some could call them boring, but I say this is something that you will probably reach for a lot. And if you want color, there's definitely some pops of color. There's definitely happy moments in each of these palettes that make these feel a little bit special. At least they do for me because I'm into these colors and I just like these palettes. I like them from Go and they haven't disappointed me yet, basically is what I'm saying. The metallic gel eyeshadows I think are pretty unique. It's not something that I have seen before or at least it's not something that I see often. It's definitely a different take on a shimmery formula. I really love how reflective and how pretty it looks on the lid. I like the texture. I like the fact that it feels cooling that it's a versatile, intuitive product that anyone can use. You don't need to be a master makeup artist in order to put these to use, so that I like. The eyeshadow gloss is something that we've all seen before. This isn't a sticky formula, rather it's a little bit greasier or it feels a little bit oilier on the skin. Yeah, your hair will stick to it if it's down. So if you're wearing your hair up like I am today, you should be fine, but it's not necessarily something that you need to go out and get. I did like the under eye blurring balm. It felt very cool on the skin and that quite frankly just feels really nice on the delicate eye area so that's a nice addition didn't care too much for the mist thing I didn't think the actual sprayer was fine enough to be called a fine mist in fact it was just a spray so I could probably live without that I really really like the blushes that also doubled as a very pretty matte lipstick I thought the colors were nice I'm excited to test out more colors all in all I can say that I am honestly pretty impressed at first impression. Was I expecting more? Not really. I actually think I'm getting the vibe for this brand and what Ariana Grande is trying to put out there. I 
getting the sense of space age, very easy makeup. I even dare to say that this could probably be a competitor to say Glossier or Milk Makeup that like natural your skin but better type of vibe you know but with a hint of color with a hint of interest with some shimmer with some different textures i'm getting it and i'm not turned off <laughs> that is my story those are my final two cents i am sticking to it this is the look that i put together and i like it and it's fun and it's fresh and it's springy and it makes me feel good. I will definitely update you on the Lash and Brow Serum. Not sure if I care to see one of those from REM Beauty just yet. I would probably prefer to see that from like a Peter Thomas Roth or something like that, which by the way, their Lash and Brow Serum is bomb AF. I regress. Anyway, you guys, this is the video. This is the review. I hope you like it. Let me know in the comments below what are you excited to see from REM Beauty, from Ariana Grande? What are some of the products that are looking good to you? What do you care for? What do you not care for? Sound off and I will reply back. All right, you guys, I am zooming on out. You are checking out more of my videos over here. You're clicking on them because I put them there for you for a reason. And now I'm going to say farewell. Peace out and I'm out. Peace.